My name is Julio Anel and I'm a naturalist at Walter B. Jacobs Memorial Nature Park, uh, which is one of Caddo Parish Parks. Uh, welcome to an introduction to acrylic painting program again. And today we're going to paint a Luna moth. Uh, Luna moth, uh, this is the color I'm going to be using, but it can be paler colors uh, too. But for this color, here are the paints that we need. This is a uh, lily pad green, medium yellow, yellow med, Bur uh, yellow ochre. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Permanent Black, Titanium White. I'm going to try this too. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be needing it or not, but this is Green Yellow. It's a very nice color, a uh, green color difficult to uh, obtain by mixing different greens. So I'm going to just hold it on the side just in case. Uh, as usual, <laughs> I draw my sketches. I do this uh, in order to be able to estimate the size uh, because I don't want to be drawing and erasing. So after the sketch I put mine here I try to draw as little as possible on my substrate. Your substrate is uh, a square, hard canvas. And the brushes we will need will be uh, number 8 Filbert, number uh, 2 Filbert, and a liner. Since these are small, when I'm painting on small substrates, I, I prefer, of course, you don't need uh, too many big brushes, so these three will do. Okay, uh, just get ready with your uh, water and your uh, napkins and let's start painting. Okay, I will leave the background white, so I'm going to paint, go ahead and put my white to the background, to the edges of my moth.
we're going to paint from here to here. Well, let's start with a thin line here because it gets very thin towards the edges. And we're going to paint these now. I'm going to paint the whole thing and then I can put the lighter color later. Right in the middle, or almost right in the middle, as you see. Try to make it symmetrical. Always look at the distance between here, so they're in the same spot. Since I draw it earlier, I have I can see the line here, so I'm just gonna. There's a lighter part, but we don't worry about that right now. Just want to put the a mark in, this, in the correct spot. With, with gray, looks like the head part is a little bit gray, whitish. I'm going to make a little bit gray to put the tiny head right here in the middle, right in the middle of the thorax. This is the head. And then this has got eyes, which is black, on each side of this tiny head, here and here. Okay. And with the burnt umber, Again, with this dark brown, almost blackish brown, I'm going to draw the uh, antennae first. The ochre, this color here, neither yellow nor brown, something in between. But we have to be very careful because this is going to be like really almost like a leaf, bulky in the middle, and it gets.
I think this looks good. I'm happy with this. I will put, you know, I'm really not happy with, it doesn't, we don't see these round parts, you know, protruding. So we use a little bit of white for the head, a shadow almost, to make it in the middle. The edges will stay gray, so like that. And we have to work on this part. But before that, I want to put these other marks. These to the bottom. I will do this. I'm waiting for these two to dry. Let's work on the wings now. <clears throat> I didn't realize you weren't seeing it. Okay, so I'm using Lily. I made this a little bit thinner because it was too thick there. So, and I'm using the lily pad green to make it look like the wing has veins and I mean it does have veins so it's this is I'm just using lily pad green right now not added anything it is darker right at the edges Has a, has a line coming like this. This is supposed to be very Yeah, let me paint it dark and then I will put the lines. I think it will be easier. This is like painting negative, you know. I, my brain doesn't do the first painting. <laughs> I'm going to paint here. I'm going to make it darker 
And then I'm going to put lighter shadows, whatever necessary for these veins. Like I said, if you can't paint one way, try the other way. I'm going to use some white now, white, to put kind of like hairy, just the edges. Okay, let's paint the other side darker while waiting on this side to dry. There's a shadow here. Let me see how this color works and then I'm gonna let you know what I'm doing. I'm using this dark brown now, the burnt uh, umber, to make this, uh, there's a shadow here from the top. This is the second leaf, I mean second <laughs> wing in the back, the back wing. And we're just gonna work on to make this shady at the bo at the top and then it will be lighter towards the bottom. And we're gonna make it kind of like lines of a curtain. This is very delicate looking wings. And the edge, I'm using this burnt umber, the dark brown, to now make the shadowy, very, very light. I'm trying to, um, oops. Okay, let's use our green to make it dark green. I go back and forth to make this shadowy dark green at the edges with burnt umber. There's too much water here. Let's get rid of this water. I'm using burnt umber to put shadows and then use lighter, you know, kind of like yellow and white. We're gonna we're trying to do the fold, foldy looking. This is white. Kind of using white right now. Oh, 
Okay, now this is, uh, I'm gonna use this uh, what's this? Burnt Sienna, don't wanna say something. Oh, this Burnt Sienna here, reddish brown, to put the browns on the edges of the wings. Just little fuzzy looking all the way around. And here you can draw a line. Fuzz won't be visible here. Okay, that's fuzz. Let's put the same fuzz here. It has to be like hair. Very tiny lines. It has to cover the green though. You shouldn't be seeing the green at the ends. Just like this other one, it kind of turns into a brown line at here. Okay, so that. And now we're going to use white to put some border again right here all the way along it's a very thin you can just paint it kind of like, like this very light never press your brush too much and don't, don't be afraid you can always correct your mistakes when the paint dries. It's not like there's no going back. Just enjoy your painting. And then remember, even in real life, these uh, butter, these uh, animals, I mean, they don't even have the same tone of color sometimes. So there are variations, so doesn't have to be exactly like this painting here. Even in nature, they're not all the same exactly. We're going to do the same thing to the edges of the bottom with the sienna, burnt sienna. Very, very thin, very thin, almost invisible, almost invisible. Not invisible, just almost invisible. We're going to do the same thing, kind of like a fuzzy. This is, it's almost like very delicate folds, like a skirt. This. So it's not really straight. Same thing here, just invisible almost. Very, very, I can paint over that. It's too thick.
Now we're gonna do the white just like we did on the top here. Try to make your brown look very thin line, very, very thin line. So I'm kind of painting over the brown too, a little bit in parts. I want to make this brown looking really thin. In fact, I can paint from the bottom. This is looking too thick, so I'm going to kind of make it thinner. Like this. Painting a little bit over it with white, so it's almost invisible. I don't want this edge to disappear, so I'm going to kind of paint it like this, because there's a stage goes like this. And it comes out from this side. You can make this end the way you want, like a ribbon. <laughs> okay, let's... I'm gonna use this darkish brown to do this part of the wing. Shadow. And I'm, my brown disappeared here, so I'm going to put a very thin line of brown coming out from this side. I'm going to go over of some of these. I'm still going to complete this one. Let's put the white on this side. I'm using white now and trying to put the whites uh, to certain spots to make it look okay. every once in a while step back to look at your painting and uh, find parts that don't look right to you and just go over them it doesn't have to be exactly like this picture that you're looking at. Just make it the way you want it to look. I'm going to put some light green in this part because this there's it looks, it does, it's not clear enough that this comes down here as green. I'm using my green going over this, getting rid of these browns because I put them to create a shadow effect in the first place. They are not the color in the tails. to make this thinner thus it's the tail is not that thick so I'm gonna kind of get rid of this ex, extra part here with the white it's delicately folding just like a ribbon and always always make sure this is coming from here, so it has to look like one piece, you know, it's extension of this. 
you have to make sure of those effects, you know, it's one line. And this too. There's a brown line in between, I want to get rid of that. Okay. So this, I'm almost happy with this, except there's too much brown here. Just want it to be shadow, not the, there's not a line here, just a shadow because of the folding. So I go back and forth with the brown and green until I want, I have the effect that I want. Okay, now I'm going to work on this here. There has to be a white line in there. <laughs> Let's put the white line first. Right around this iris looking part, it's a white. I'm going to do the same thing here and then paint corrections. I want to put this yellow lighter part here a little bit more visible so I'm going to put light yellow there so it is more visible that there's a color difference there like that. I painted this one. Did you see that? And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. To the bulky part, there's a lighter portion there. There. I'm going to create. I just put a lighter yellow here and then there's a black spot I mean I'm going to use again this burnt umber there's a very slightly visible black spot in the middle of these just like here it's not very visible but it's good enough about here I'm gonna make the top part thicker I will leave the bottom just as because it's gonna be thinner at the bottom right here some reason it doesn't want to. Invisible. I'm just trying to make this look like this. So I'm putting white. If you didn't mess it up, don't worry about it. I'm trying to create my mess. I'm let's put the veins here. which would be with lighter green. I'm going to mix the uh, lily green, lily pad green with white to make it a lighter green. And I'm going to... It has to be a very thin line. Not the thick line. Okay, there's one here. You know these lines are not haphazard. They have they have to be realistic too. Okay. 
Okay, this is good. I can make some shadows there too in, um, in a minute. I'm gonna wait for this to kind of dry. I'll do the same thing on this side now. We put these here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other wing. Light green, light lily pad green, mixing with white. And draw one line here. And there's a couple of lines right here. And then Let's work on this part a little bit, the thorax. I'm using ochre. The basic color for this part is ochre. Yes. And I'm using yellow and white to make it look round, you know, round. This part is round. It's kind of bumpy, so we have to make it look like it is bumpy. It doesn't look very bumpy here. I'm waiting for this to dry so I can work on that a little bit because there is a yellow part. This part is dry, so I'm going to paint this to show you. See, there's a yellow part there. I'm using, again, the ochre for that. Not yellow, but ochre. Okay. White the top, ochre the bottom. Let me do this. Let's see if this is dry. Okay, that's dry. Let me create this before I do anything else. Okay, and I will put the white top. And this one too. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's good. I'm going to work on this part here. It's not the way I want it. So I'm going to, and then we're going to be, I think, done with this. See this? It, it looks like it has little pleats on this. So I'm losing, I'm, I'm using this light green. Uh, very light green to make the lighter parts. I'm going to look from behind. I want shadows here because the top leaf, I mean <laughs> top wing. Top wing shadow falls on this part. So I'm going to kind of use this dark brown to make a shadow here. Make it look a little bit shadowy. I don't want line like this. I want it to be gradually changing as usual. There shouldn't be an abrupt change from 
dark to light or vice versa. Unless it is a shadow line. I think I like this. I want to make this tail part right here a little bit uh, visible using the shadow techniques again. Kind of like it goes this way and this one it should be darker at the bottom because shadow of the top one is falling onto the bottom one. And I want to make these folds by making white lines because the folds light is hitting somewhere I'm just putting it like this and then I'm going to use green to make the whites like light is hitting the folds okay let's put the green now as you see you can play until you want you see the effect that you want. I want to fold here, so I'm gonna make this darker here. I'm using the browns to make kind of look the shadows. make a shadow of fold here so that's what we're trying to do right now a folding shadow for a fold some white here because this is on top and the light is hitting here so it should be lighter green here shouldn't be the same color with the one at the bottom which is under its shadow okay and we're gonna make this part a little bit darker because this is a crowded part of the This is a crowded part of the... There is the thorax, there is the abdomen, the wings are on top of each other. So this part is a little bit more complex. I'm using black, but very, very lightly. I'm not making straight lines with black, as you see. I'm trying to make it a blending shadow here with black. I'm trying to make this part a little bit crisp line. And I'm going to put some black little hairs right here. Very, very tiny, very thin. And these here too. A couple of lines will give the impression. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if it is okay or not. I'm going to use this ochre 
to to have some lighter parts here again. Maybe some yellow to put the whitest shadow where the light hits right in the middle of these bumpy. Let me see. I put some drops of white there because I'm going to put this yellow which is not becoming visible all by itself so I'm making it lighter yellow by using white because there are sections here and I want these sections to be visible okay now this is exactly the way I want it let's touch some light here I want to make this middle part really white I think I have a mess here that's not crisp line it has to be crisp line these tails are very delicate ribbon looking I don't want this blending in with anything just want them okay separate I hope you enjoyed painting our Luna moth uh, thank you for joining me and see you next time